House to Home, presented by Remax Diamond Realty. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you and yours. I'm Jason Salas, and this is House to Home. And Liz and Gina are here. Uh, Liz seems to be out on the road right now, hustling, as always. <laughs> and Gina just basically like running the world from her, her from her desk at the office and everything like that. So, so ladies, uh, good to see you. And we have a guest this week once again. And as I understand it, someone who knows way more about appraisal than pretty much anybody. That's, That's right. right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just one of the old guys in the room. Okay. So, so with that, with that introduction, Bruce Dinsman, welcome to the show, and we're very, very ha uh, happy to have you here to uh, shine some. Uh, interesting specialized perspective on uh, on another important aspect of real estate. Okay, so what I what was sent to me was let's talk about accessory structures. Now, so the easiest thing for me to tell you is the most common one that almost everybody knows. In your on your in your on your property in the back corner, you can have up to a two hundred square foot storage or cooking facility it and it can be on the corners of the lot the only thing against it is you can't have water can't go onto somebody else's property because of what you built so you got to put gutters on it and stuff like that okay mm -hmm. that's the only negative i've ever heard about this so the 200 square foot that's a standard everybody should know that and a lot of people use that okay now I want to go to some new stuff that has changed in the last 10 years. In 2011, there was an update to the zoning code. Bruce, can I ask you a quick question? You said sure. use 200 square feet and you said you can use it for storage or you can use it for a cooking facility. Okay, that is the, the first exception in the, uh, uh, the, lo the lots and tables portion of the zoning code. That's the first mention of an accessory structure that they make. And I wanted to clarify that it's different than other accessory structures. Okay, okay so I can that is the most common one that most people know about and can easily put up a structure for for storage in their back corner. So back corner, and I could put in a full kitchen facility like a sink, a refrigerator, a stove. Yes. It says basically it can be storage or a cooking facility, which is a nod to dirty kitchens. Okay, no, and then have them. Let's just admit it. Yeah, so we, we do. Can it can it can it abut the boundary point? So if I have yes. a back fence, so yes. it could be built onto the back fence. Right. I mean, specifically that exep exception to the zoning code is designed to give people a place to cook their fish. That's what yes. it was for, honestly. And, and, and if my son happens to spend the night in there five days a week. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're I'm, not going to call it a dwelling unit, are we? Well, no, it's my... <laughs> of course we're not. So it's all you the know, time. You know, of course, just making this up completely theoretically, not like that's ever happened in real life, of course. You know. <laughs> so, so, Bruce, so, Bruce, the roof of, let's say, my outdoor kitchen, it, it extends from the back structure of my wall, my house, and then it extends back to the back fence. The roof is in place. So when, as long as it's within a certain size, there's no problem. Well, actually, there's, the, there's part of the rub. The zoning code is a little bit muddy on this particular topic, but generally that storage facility is separated from the main house. Not attached. And a lot of people do put, yeah, they put the patio back there and it's all connected. Next thing you know, you're extended from front to back. That's correct. So I think the intent was, no, it's not supposed to be connected to the to the house. So, so okay. you know, so I would. So, Bruce, this would be within the ten feet back, back. Um, step back requirement. That's requirement. where you could the right. cooking the back and or side, right? Okay, or on the side, right? Okay. And, and so you, I, you I'm explicitly that... have to have some sort of structure, Bruce, that that connects the house to the extension or to the. You're not supposed to. That's supposed to be okay. connected. So you, you don't have to put, you don't have to put <laughs> now, like a, like I've a seen weird or, rulings or a... from uh, land management before where they've come out and said, okay, just cut uh, a line across yeah. the back of the patio so it's separated like an eighth of an inch. It's just a line. So it's not connected to the house. 
I've seen That's that done. I've seen it in rulings from land management. So we can take part of the tin off the roof and we're in compliance. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So that is the primary one that most people know about. And I wanted to cover that first. The second thing I wanted to cover was, like I said, in 2011, the zoning code got updated that made a lot of properties that were previously illegal, legal. Okay. The first one is carports. You can have a carport at your boundary, at your far right or left. I'm saying or, it can't be both. You can have a carport on the side of your house, back to 15 feet from the front, but it can run to the boundary and as far back as you want. It has to be vehicle storage. Okay. So it can That's, go from the front all the way to my rear setback. Right. Another, but it can't be in the front setback. It cannot be in the front 15 feet. Can't be in the front 15 side right. and back. I had one. Somebody sent me that one. I don't know, Gina. I don't think it was you, but somebody sent me a picture not too long ago and said my client wants to know if she has to t take off this tin. It had a metal roof carport or porch all the way across the front of the house to the front fence, all the way to the right fence and all the way back along the side. I said, yeah, you need to take that out. <laughs> and you know, that, that's the critical point. If you're doing uh, concrete walls and a metal roof, then these, these, whatever you build is curable because you take off the roof. But when right. you're trying to build with concrete, uh, let's say you need a cooking facility and, and your, your adult daughter or adult son might be cooking like 24-7 in that cooking facility. Uh, you want to make sure you're following the rules so that doesn't make your property illegal. And that's Correct. the reason Bruce today. Families, right. yeah. I've, I've got a relative who's trying right now to build um, – a storage or a cooking facility and her daughter might store her stuff in there and stay there overnight watching her things. So these are important things to know. Sure. That's right. Okay, so Bruce, now. again, on the, on the other item. So if I did that and then I put a, a metal roof, I could bring it up to the boundary point on the left side and all the way to the back at the rear side. And I'm okay. Yes. That's as long as I don't. Why encroach, that rule was there. Right. And as long as I don't extend up to the front boundary, it's perfect. Yes. Okay. okay. That's so great. Were you talking about the storage or the carport? The carport. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to separate because that the storage in the right in the in the rear corner is specifically limited to 200 square feet. Hmm. Okay. okay. Just make sure we got that. Okay. The next one I want to talk about under that same revision was. You can have a generator enclosure or a, actually the way the law reads is it says anything to do with power. In other words, it could be a solar bank uh, storage facility or whatever, but it can be in your front corner and it cannot exceed 312 square feet. That was because, like I said, everybody in Tamooning was putting in generators and they didn't want the truck that dropped off the gas to go around the house so they wanted to put it up front. Well, okay. until that zoning code was changed in 2011, those were all illegal. Every single one of them. Matter of fact, I did two appraisals and I upset owners because it was before 2011. It was a, a general enclosure. I'm going, that can't be there. They had to actually take the concrete roof off. Okay. Ooh. So <laughs> what wow. I'm saying is no easy task. Yeah, I know. See, and that's that. But my point is, if you know more about the law, you can stay within the law without violating the law. Mm. That's the point. OK. Yeah. So I'm a law abiding citizen. OK. <laughs> anyway. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, Liz, 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 we got Liz, we got about 30 seconds. So uh, you have the last word, please. OK. I know. But uh, Bruce, we had him come to speak to our team to educate our team as well on the different changes. And I think the objective is to get our consumers to know so that if they're selling their home, they know exactly what they need to do to either correct a deficiency or that whatever they've built, like the carport on the side, is allowable. And of course, for all of us, that would add value. Right. It makes a difference. It's, it's a convenience. Sure does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not as easy as just erecting a couple walls and like throwing something up and, you know, putting shingles on it. You have to know the laws, Bruce said. So that, that's a major takeaway right. from today. So and Bruce, Bruce, maybe, maybe Bruce can quote the law so people can look it up. What's the law, okay. Bruce? Again, this is available from the compiler of laws. You can look it up on GovGuam. 21 GC 061 is the real estate chapter. It's chapter six of title 21. Fantastic. So that, that's, that's your, the, the Bible, as it were, about real estate and what you can and cannot do. I was going to say, you're, you're not only law abiding, but you're also a uh, law aware. So you just quoted chapter and verse. So well done. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, pre we're preaching the law of real estate here on the show. So Bruce, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. All right. Merry all right. Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas, all right. Christmas all right. everyone. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.